Hey everybody, if uh, you're anything like me, or if you're remotely into home automation, you've probably heard about these new uh, Wi-Fi controlled smart plugs um, out, put out by uh, E-Tech City. I had the older version that were RF controlled. They come in a pack of five and you'd use a, uh, a hook hub to control them and I really liked them. They, they worked really well. I used them for Oh, I don't know, whenever the hookup came out, up until, I don't know, two weeks ago, when I got my first set of these. So, I have them all put in. I've been using them for mm, three weeks now, real happy with them. Uh, I just got another set, in fact. And I uh, have one spare, uh, at least one that's not currently needed. So, uh, before I find a home for it, you know, a place to use it, I figured it might be kind of neat to see what's inside. I have an older one that's taken apart uh, that I was actually trying to do this with. I was trying to put one of those uh, those ESP ones inside. I ended up doing it with a different uh, housing, but you know these were I don't know four of them for fifty bucks or something, sixty bucks. I forget. I got them on Amazon, but the price was very reasonable, and they set up super easy. Uh, they're nice and low profile. They don't waste your outlet space. You can plug it into an outlet and it still leaves the other outlet open. So that's pretty sweet. So I figured let's uh, let's take this one apart. It's uh, This one's for US, obviously. There's the QR codes for getting the apps. The app was real easy to set up. Let's see, this one's rated at 120 volts, 8 amps, resistive load forget what the inductive load limit was. It was, it was less. Um, but, you know, for normal stuff, lights and things like that, it's fine. I have a fan on one and lights on another. Uh, on the other ones, I should say, in the other six or seven. So, yeah, let's see. We have a, a power toggle button. Plus, this also can be used for resetting and setting up if you need to. But, um... Mostly it's just for, you know, you turn it on if you don't have the app or if you're not connected to your uh, Echo or Google Home. So there's no obvious, no obvious screw holes on here. I suspected there might be some under the sticker, but there's nothing under here. I really don't want to wreck this one, but, you know. You do what you got to do, because, uh, let's see, hmm, no, I don't really want to crush it, but maybe what I'll do is just confirm, let's confirm that there's no screws under here, make sure that this top cover's not thicker than it seems, because I would expect to be able to feel screw holes under here. It is a pretty thick label, but definitely, yeah, no screw holes there. And none there. So yeah, this label does not come off. Interesting. Is there... No. All right. Okay, so it must be this seam here. Let's just kind of press. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but watch. See the shadow gets a little bigger as it flexes? So that's a good sign. That means that it's probably not glued, or if it is glued, it's only glued in a few spots. My guess is it snaps together. But there might be some glue. You know, right now, having a vise would be handy. Hmm. All right, let's see, the most convenient 
spot. Uh, see, I'm trying to get in between. All right, before I cut my hand open, I'm just going to make a little gap to get the screwdriver into because I think if I can just get in oh it's like that oh there we go I was going to suggest that I pause the video but no oh, there we go got the spudger in there oh yeah so it looks like there's clips that makes sense so you have a clip here probably four maybe five so let's see let's get in there there's one let's keep this in here and then there's another one so they must be every few inches go well that's pretty cool so there's a mild amount of serviceability not sure I could snap all these but I'm gonna try not to yep there we go so let's see one two three four five six. that's quite a few there we are. Now you can see where the clips are. And you can see the way they uh, protect the outlets from interacting with each, with each other. It's pretty cool. And there's the LED. This is a two color. There's a blue and orange, I think, or blue and amber. And now we're at the guts. So let's see what Wi-Fi chip they are using. It looks like an ESP8266, but who knows? They have, uh, what's that say? V-Sync, V-E-S, V-E-Sync. Right on the can, it says V-E-Sync. So that could be uh, just a different can on top of something off the shelf, but that's about the size of an 8266 um, ESP12 or an 8255. It's got the LED down there though. Or maybe it's made by those folks. It's hard to, it's hard to say anymore. I really don't know. Right there, well let's pop the board out and look at it. Let's look at the rest of it. No, just like that. Gotta love that. So they can just get different backs and fronts depending on the manufacturer or the uh, country that they're manufacturing for. And it also looks like the top, well, the top board. Hmm, not, they must have modules built up. You'd have to, because you'd have to have a different footprint for all this depending on the country you were in. So let's see, let's look at how it works. So there's our, our power in. It's coming in through some pretty heavy, heavy wires though. That looks like it's 14 wire at least. It's solid, it's not stranded. There's a thermal fuse. Ah, oh, and there's a normal fuse too, that yellow can there. That's a fuse. That is a Oh wait, or is that a capacitor? Sorry, that's a capacitor. I was gonna say it's a looks like those little Pico fuses, but no, that's a capacitor. This must be the fuse. Yeah, okay. And they're fine. That's fine. 
and we have a, a thermal trip over here and they have that sitting on top of the relay that's a good idea looks look, looks like it's all power stuff for the microcontroller there's our button yeah the button just goes right to the microcontroller and then the LED again also goes right back looks like there's some passives down on there but nothing spectacular Probably a relay driver. Yeah, there's the relay driver. So this uh, V-Sync chip, this thing goes through two layers. I was thinking about trying to pull it out, but eh, I don't know. Take that out. and I don't know if I want to tear it down that far. Uh, at least not this time. I still want to put this one in operation. I will say, though, if I get another one uh, that... I don't need, or if one of the ones I have goes bad, we'll tear it down, tear it down. Because I like these wireless controllers. These are kind of cool. The uh, the old ones were very similar. They used those 433 megahertz modules, those RF modules. Here, I'll show you this and you'll remember them. This thing. See, that's the other one. It had the remote control, the clicker remote. This is one that I uh, put a power supply on and I had one of those ESP01 boards set up on it. And it worked okay. But this is so much nicer. It's good to know, so if you have one of these and you're not getting power out of it and you hear the relay clicking, uh, you can check some things. So, yeah, that's the uh, the inside of one of these E-Tech City smart plugs. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to try and do as many different kinds of videos as possible at least uh in this kind of world so uh, if you have any requests or if there's some content you're curious about you know sparked by some of the stuff i've done in the past please let me know uh other than that thanks for watching